Hi, I'm Tom Ansell, and you're watching Sporting Icons. Hi, right, everyone. Got a very special guest today. We have Tom Ansell. How are you, my friend? Yeah, I'm very good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks very much for asking. So, you're 25 years old and super welterweight. Uh, super lightweight now. Are you super so, lightweight? Yeah, super lightweight. Oh, okay, because uh, box work has you down as uh, super welterweight. Yeah, well, basically, I started at middleweight, and then uh, I've come down ever since, but I'm staying at super lightweight now, so okay. <laughs> that's it. That's it for losing weight. Oh, that's cool. Well, I mean, is that like an easy mate, um, weight to make, is it? Uh, yeah, I find it quite easy, um, to be fair. So I've got a really good nutritionist on board called Paul O'Neill, then um, my training's been top standard with uh, my strength and conditioning coach, Scott Macy at Fight 364, and then um, obviously my head trainer, Tony Pill. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, yes. when, okay, so when you were fighting at middleweight, um, that was in your amateurs then, yeah? Uh, no, well, I didn't actually have any amateur um, career. I just went um, into unlicensed. Okay. Um, I, had, I had a few unlicensed fights and won them all. And then I ended up having a um, kind of like an interview with Frank Warren and Francis Warren oh, yeah. for, an, for an unlicensed TV show on BT Sports called uh, Total Combat. Oh, yeah. Uh, they put, put me on that. Then I won... Um, I won each fight on that, uh, so yeah, it was all good, but the, the TV show didn't really take off, to be fair. Ah, oh. okay, so what kind of luck got you into boxing then? Um, well, I was a rugby player before, and I was just trying to get fit for pre-season, so I went into um, into a boxing gym in Hitchin, from where I'm originally from, Yeah. and, uh, and I started sparring, just got the buzz from it straight away. Okay. I mean, um, was you always like a big fan of boxing, like a grown up? Uh, yeah, I was always a big, big fan. I had one of my close friends, Graham Tyrrell. He, um, he was a professional boxer, and he, he, he always used to have fights at York Hall in the Camden Centre. Yeah. So I used to um, always buy tickets from him. And then, and when, when watching it, I always got got the buzz and thought, I want to try this. So I gave it a go. Oh, nice. So, so you enjoy beating people up then? Is that like the real reason? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. But, I mean, the super lightweight division is stacked here in the UK and, of course, abroad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it'll be a couple... I'd say give me, a, give me a year or two years before I start building all those guys, but... It is a great division. I'd say probably one of the best divisions in the world at the moment. Yeah. Um, but I, I hope to make an I hope to make an impact on it in the future. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, it, it, I mean, like this weekend, you've got um, Catchall versus O'Hara Davis. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's a brilliant fight, buddy. It's I think. <sighs> My head's saying go for Catterall because he is such a talented fighter. Um, and Ahara Davis, he is as well. But I just think Catterall, with the people he's got around him, like Frampton and, and uh, Jamie Moore, I think he's going to edge him for me. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, that's a Jamie Moore. He's really come on uh, pretty much out of nowhere, hasn't he, as a coach, you know, with uh, Frampton, Catterall, and uh, Martin Murray. Loads of money. Yeah. Exactly, and I always knew, knew him as, because um, he was a bit before my time, but I always knew him as a pundit. Yeah. I didn't really think he, he had his own coaching career, but he's worked wonders with it. Mark Frampton's last fight, he was brilliant. Yeah, he was. Yeah, against uh, Luke Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so Catterall for me. Oh, okay. And, and the... Um, do you agree with the uh, decision um, a few days ago that uh, Josh Taylor got voted the UK Fighter of the Year? Um, yeah, you've got to, to be fair. He, he's, he's been brilliant. He, he's such a talented fighter. Yes. Um, look what he did to Hara Davy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, think, I can imagine he's going to be one of the all-time all -time greats, to be honest. And he's just got to get through the Super Series now. Um, 
which I think he's, he's a strong favourite for it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, do you fancy him to win it then? I do fancy him to win it, actually. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. I mean, in like a couple of years' time, um, if they bring out the super lightweight in the World Boxing Super Series again, would you fancy throwing your name in the hat? I think you've got to. You've got to take opportunities like, like that. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, I'll get my record up and remain unbeaten. And then, um, yeah, get in that mix. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, and also with uh, Super Lightweight, how do you rate the likes of um, Atif Shafiq? Sorry, what was that, sorry? How do you rate Atif Shafiq? Uh, but I don't actually know too much about him, to be honest. Yeah. But um, obviously if he's, if he's in there, but if he's, he's obviously a top, white, top fighter, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And so he's from the uh, Dominic Ingle gym as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and one of my neighbours as well, also in your division, Glenn, Glenn Foote. Yeah, yeah, Glenn Foote. I, I haven't, I don't really know too much about him again, but he's, uh, he's got a title at the moment, isn't he? Um, yeah, I think it's just, just like a local title. Yeah, I think it's something near, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, um, yeah. He must be, must be up there and um, must be doing something right. I'm sure he'll, he'll then go on to uh, English standard or British standard. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And of course, you've still got uh, some of the, I know, is it unfair to call him a veteran in Tommy Coyle? Yeah, yeah, Tommy Coyle. Uh, Tommy Coyle is one of my, one of my favourite uh, fighters, to be honest. Yeah. He, is, he is literally up for war, whatever happens. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And how do you rate uh, Terry Flanagan's chances? Um, uh, see, I, I like him, but his last, I can't remember who his last fight was against, but I wasn't really, I was impressed, but I, I, I expected more. Yeah. Um, his, his last fight was a little while ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah um, he hasn't really been that active since. No, his last fight was against Maurice Hooker, where he uh, lost the title. Yeah, yeah, but he hasn't, he hasn't really been that active since, um, really, so it'll be interesting to see how he comes back from that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And of course you've got a Eubank in your division as well, in Harlem Eubank. Harlem Eubank, I've, I've only seen him fight once on the uh, Next Gen show. Okay. And uh, he, he looks massive for uh, our way. Yeah. So uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how he deals with coming down from the wake. I think he boxed on that next gen show. Uh, I think it must be super lightweight, was there? Uh, super welterweight, sorry. Um, I'm not too sure because uh, he does. Um, he tends to fluctuate quite a bit. Yeah, but he looked he looked very big. So uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he deals with deals with coming down to that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, would you fancy your chances like before the likes of Adrian Broner hangs it up to get in there with him? Sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, um, would you like to get in there with, say, um, uh, Adrian Broner before he hangs up his gloves in a few years? I think I'd love to. I'd, I'd love to uh, punch him. He's quite... He, obviously, he's done so much to talk, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Uh, um, I think people like him sometimes they give give boxing a little bit of a um, little bit of a bad name with with things like that. Like he's been but he's been arrested a few times. Yeah. And uh, I think if he just concentrated on on boxing, it'd, it'd be brilliant again. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, um, you know, I said it before. I think that um, as much as Floyd Mayweather was a fantastic fighter, I think he's a bit of a bad influence throwing money around. All the time, it kind of like brainwashes some of them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, see what, see what happens. With him. He hasn't got any other fighters planned, has he? Um, there's actually a rumor at the minute, and it's only a rumor that uh, he could be actually fighting Floyd Mayweather in Japan. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> That's a good money. That'd be interesting if that happened. <laughs> yeah, it would, but I mean, it's unlikely. I mean, personally, I don't see Floyd Mayweather coming back. To be honest, but. I know. Oh, no. the, thing, the thing is with Floyd Mayweather, he, he's such a good businessman that 
that he was, he's only going to come back if uh, if the money's right, isn't it? Yeah. And if it makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, on to your fight. You're fighting on Saturday. Yeah, I'm fighting um, on Saturday in Tottenham. Uh, my fifth professional fight. Uh, my first six-rounder against um, Lee Hallett, I believe his name is. Yep. Who is a southpaw, um, which is the first southpaw which I've ever come up against. Okay. Um, so, that'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, it'll be, be a good learning curve. So, yeah. Oh, that's cool. What's well, this? Um Spin to your left a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been to my left. I've been sparring a lot of um, of southpaws, so I've got to grips with them. So I look, I look to um, put everything I've learned in training into place. Oh, fantastic! So, um, so this would be at the um, the Tottenham Green Green Pools and Fitness in Tottenham, London. Yeah, that's it. I've, I've never fought there before. I've only fought at uh, uh, your call and um, the O2 Indigo. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what Tottenham has, really. Um, I've got quite, quite a lot of support coming down. Um, so, I'm excited to fight. Oh, cool. And uh, do you have tickets left? Uh, I do have a few tickets left. So, if anyone's interested in coming, um, if they follow me on my Instagram, which is Tom Ansel Nine, then they can purchase on the link in my bio. Okay, and um, I'll put the link in the description of this video as well for anyone really? to uh, give that a click. Okay, so I mean, I mean the rest of the card. I'm looking at the rest of the card. There's quite a few uh, prospects, including yourself, of course, on this card. There's a lot yeah, of there is. There's uh, Jack Newham, who uh, I've been sparring for this camp. He's not a southpaw, but yeah. um, we've had some great rounds. Yeah. Um, and then there's also Brad Pauls, who Brad Pauls um, was on my last card. Yeah. And he looked brilliant. He um, he can bang. He, he, uh, he can, he's got one of the hardest punches I've seen, and he's also a very, very good boxer. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so he's currently 9-0, and isn't he, at middleweight? Uh, yeah, I believe he's 9-0, and, and uh, I think his last fight, it was a Southern Area Eliminator. Okay. So, um, it'll be interesting who he fights, who he fights with Southern Area. I'm not actually sure who's got it at the moment, or no. even if they'll want to fight him. No, That's, well, um, his opponent, William Warburton, um, he's got... <laughs> A hellacious loss record, 141 losses. Yeah, but he's a very, very tough journeyman. I mean, it's what, what, what um, William turns up to, be Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, he's only ever been stopped twice out of 141 losses, so... <laughs> so, yeah, he knows the game and he, uh, he can also take a punch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, like, good luck to, obviously, yourself and uh, Brad Pauls and the rest of the guys, I said, because there's quite a few guys making, uh, what, uh, third third pro debut in there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it should be um, a nice, exciting card to be fair, but it should be packed out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, obviously, like, this weekend, obviously, you've got um, Catrell, O'Hara Davis with Daniel Dubois, etc. on the card as well. Um Obviously, you won't be able to watch that because you'll be fighting yourself. Um, yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, will you be watching the Matchroom USA show later in the evening? Or early uh, hours? I probably won't, to be honest, because um, I'll, I'll be so busy with uh, with everyone that's coming. Because when people come and watch me fight, I like to uh, I like to get around and thank everyone and, yeah. and uh, see what they think. Because uh, they, they're taking their time out to... Uh, to come and see me and come and support me. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I do like to like to thank everyone. No, that's fair enough. So what is like a, your training regime then? Do you train like a seven days a week and eight um, times a day? I, and... <laughs> I train um, five to six days a week. Um, yeah. I do two training sessions a day. I do um, a boxing session with my head coach Tony. And then I either do running or a strength and conditioning session with uh, my SSC coach, Scott. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'll try. I think the thing with me, I just, um, I love training. Okay. <laughs> so 
I've come a little bit obsessed with it. <laughs> um, so sometimes I won't have a day off, which my trainer goes absolutely mad at me for. Yeah. But um, because obviously the body recovers when you when you're resting. That's right. But um, I just like I always like to think I'm doing more than my opponent. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I always have that in my mind when I'm training, and that's what makes me want to train. That's the same mentality as uh, Dylan White, because he told me the same thing. Yeah, I think Dylan White, wow, well, he's come on. He, how he hasn't got a title yet, I don't know. No, I think uh, he's pretty avoided, I think. Yeah, 100% he's being avoided. I just, I was there at the, uh, at the fight when he lost to uh, AJ. Oh, yeah. Just imagine what situation it'd be now if he won against AJ. I could imagine he would have all the he would have all the belts now. Oh, I couldn't yeah. see anyone else beating him in the in the division. Well, that's the thing because um, I always say, and um, I mean, of course, everyone is, is entitled to their own opinion. But for me, I think that uh, Dylan White beats Wilder. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And I, I think he, so I'd say he beats Wilder, I'd say he'd get in Fury's head as well, and hmm. he would turn it into a scrap, which Fury wouldn't like. Yeah. Um, and I think it'll, it'll be very close for um, White versus AJ again. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be a lot closer than the uh, last fight. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Although he could be fighting uh, uh, Chisora next, though. So. If if, yeah, if Chisora can yeah. find the five million. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw that video. Um, I think that that's another brilliant fight. That was one of the fights of the year for me. That last uh, the last that time they fought. Yeah. Um, but although I, I kind of contradicted myself a little bit at the moment, I did think Chisora won that, yeah. and uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do have a rematch. How uh, how they both. Um, I've learned from the last fight. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm more interested in the build-up again. I enjoyed that build-up last one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was good. Cause they're both, they're both uh, so unpredictable. Uh, it, it makes good telly. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But, I, I mean, for me, I think at heavyweight, Dylan is one of the most improved fighters ever since the AJ loss. Oh, yeah, 100%. I, like I said, I don't, I don't see... If Chisora turns up like he did last time, I think um, I think that will be a, another great fight, but I don't see Wilder or Fury beating White. No, no. So, well, but, you... However, I, I do I do think uh, Fury will beat Wilder. Oh, you um, do? Okay, that's my next question. Uh, I think for me, I think Fury will will just completely outbox him as as Wilder is. He's done great to get where he is, and he's got a belt, but mm. technically he's, he's not a great fighter, as no. Fury is technically a great fighter. No. Well, that's the thing. I've always said that Wilder, um, if he can't land that big punch, he's a, he, he's a unanimous decision loss waiting to happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. No, that's cool. And um, so with um, uh, Dylan White, AJ, who would you pick? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> It'll be a very close fight. I think AJ knows he can knock him out. He's already done it. Um, however, is is White stupid enough to get him to get him to a fight like that again with him? Yeah. Um, I reckon. I reckon that AJ will. Uh, it could go either way. Yeah. Fair comment, fair comment. And uh, we've got like a couple of Brits this weekend as well on the USA card uh, match room. Um, uh, Callum Johnson is going for his work, first world title against uh, yeah, yeah. Better BF. Yeah, he, uh, he beat um, Frank Fabioni last time. Um, yeah. He beat him quite an easy fight. Um, mm-hmm. However, I, I didn't really know that much about him before he fought uh, Frank Provioni because I think the light heavy uh, heavyweight division is quite um, it's, it's not really publicised as much at the moment. Like obviously there's Yards, mm-hmm. Moatsi, um, 
bugger you only, but apart from those guys, who else, who else do you really hear about? Now that is true. I mean, there's quite a few like a youngsters coming through. So hopefully, as you said there, like a, the likes of Joshua Boatsy, uh, I'm going to start putting UK light heavyweight on the map. Yeah, yeah, 100. I think Boatsy, give him time, he, he's going to be phenomenal. I agree. Uh, it, well, I met him at um, the O2 Indigo show before. Yeah. And uh, he's such a nice guy, and um, and. It, Technically, one of the best boxes he's, he's walked through absolutely everyone. Yeah. So uh, I look forward to seeing more of him, to be honest. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, do you know much about um, uh, Daniel Roman? He's going to be taking on McDonald. Uh, no, I don't know uh, that much about about him, to be honest. Mm. Uh, but I'm sure I'll, I'll watch that fight and I'll find out more and um, look at his box rank. And uh, this did build up, and I'm sure it'll be brilliant. Yeah, yeah hopefully, hopefully. So, um, so who's likely your promoters in, or do you just like a flip between promoters, depending on who's putting the show on? Um, well, my main promoter is Steve Goodwin. Yeah. Who uh, he's been brilliant for me, to be honest. But however, he works closely with other promoters. Uh huh. Um, so I fought on a Haymaker undercard twice with Joe Joyce. Yeah. Uh, I was there at his day of fought on his debut on the undercard there at the O2. Yeah. And then um, my last fight at York Hall was, I think, his Commonwealth. Um, oh, again, Thomas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, he, I think he won that in the first round. So, yeah. It's, it's good to experience other, other fight cards like. As soon as a big name is mentioned, it's summer she's in to sell tickets. Definitely. So, um, so yeah, brilliant. Oh, fantastic. All right, and Tom, so um, as I said, I'll put the link in the description for everyone to contact you on social media. I'll put your Instagram, your Twitter, and of course, a direct link to tickets if they'd like a, rather just do it that way. Brilliant. Thank you. All right, and Tom, so um, good luck um, this Saturday and um, all going well, which I'm sure it will be. We'll uh, get you back on to talk about it. Brilliant, thank you very much. All right, buddy. Um... Right, so that was Tom Ansell. I said 4-0 super lightweight, and he's fighting this weekend in Tottenham. If you're available to get down there, I'll put a link in the description. So you can contact him directly for tickets, or you can just go through the ticket link in itself. So anyway, um, it kind of like cut off a little bit at the end there. So uh, Tom, he's asked me to give all his sponsors a shout out. So I'll do that right now. So the sponsors for Tom Ansell are Hermit of Red Coats Pub, Nick Ansell PT, Food One Consultancy, Complete Physio and Fitness, Wheat Sheaf Hatfield Perveral, B Fueled, BD Electrical Contractors, Red Lift Hire, Top Guard UK and Southern Glove. So thank you very much. Hope you all enjoyed it and I'll catch you all on the next video.